talk about a complex question right there, and a question that's not going to be answered in a three-minute time period or just amongst the individuals in this room. Because I look across this room, and I still see a majority, predominantly Caucasian room. I see a room that still cares quite a bit about these issues, why it's on the forefront of our radar screen, but we need to do so much more. So when I look at what I've done, what I did as I read Justified Anger is I reached out to Reverend Alex G, went to Nehemiah, and talked about the issues that he was facing right there in his own community. I said, what is it that the city or myself as a business leader can do right now to have systematic improvements. What we did was a couple different things. One, at the Urban League, we held a jobs program where we ended up inviting CEOs from companies throughout Madison, technology companies, down to the Urban League for the first time. Many members had never been to South Madison before. And for the first time during that visit, they learned some of the true treasures of South Madison. We started to talk about what were the next major factors that members of that community were looking for. And it was access to new technology companies. It was how to use different forms of social media. We ended up having these conversations and ideas not led by someone from City Hall, but residents of the actual community. Among members of the, of the tech companies, we created a job internship program that followed. 30 Jobs, a program sponsored by the YWCA that I'm still so proud of. We ensured that every single student who signed up for the program ended up having training from a key member of the community in programming and ensured an internship for every single student. But we have major issues when we have silos in our community. When we're not traveling back and forth, this is where we see the segregation in our community and it's something that we all, as Madisonians, need to work to break down. How many people in this room in the last year or two have been to Dane dances? Now there is an example, what I think is the best example, of one of the most diverse, integrated, race, ethnic income events in our, in our city. That should be the hallmark. That should be the standard for all of our activity. What it means, and it makes some people uncomfortable, that when I get in trouble, and I'm gonna perhaps get in trouble a lot, but when I get in trouble for being critical of overture, one of the things I was critical of was the lack of diversity and that putting all that money into that facility did not reflect the complexion of this community. Overture's made tremendous improvements in the last couple of years. But there's other things that a mayor can do. Uh, coincidentally, I'm meeting with Reverend G tomorrow morning. Michael Johnson from the Boys and Girls Club is here. and We meet regularly, going over a number of issues. But I think they would agree with me that for the mayor, there's more to it than that. And you can ask Sarah about nights that I get out in the car by myself and drive to Vera Court, to Penn Park, to Meadowood, other neighborhoods in the city. There's times when we're out together, and I'll say to Sarah, do you mind if we take a detour? And we go, and we drop in on neighborhoods, unannounced, no press. No escorts, no one to make introductions. That's a standard that a mayor can set. But it's so important that we create those two elements I said before, access and trust. It means engagement. This is why it's so important that we start with the schools. You go to a school event with the parents and you look at the complexion of the kids and then the parents, and it doesn't match. There's something wrong with this picture. That's why I'm so 
adamant in working with school officials that more has to be done in terms of parental engagement. That's why when we hold city conferences, I would proposed that we have childcare and transportation available for those who've got challenges in having someone watch their kids without the financial resources to pay for a sitter. These are the critical things that a mayor can do. And that's why so many of these elements that I started the introduction with are critical. Because as you know, how many here remember Harambe? Half a dozen people. That was a mechanism we set up on the south side, a system that over an eight year period of time took Madison and Dane County from what was then a standard infant mortality rate for African Americans, for African American infants, and dropped it so that actually for one year it was lower than it was for whites here in Madison and Dane County. And then people said, well, we've got victory, and they dissolved Harambe. That's why I had a meeting earlier today. It's a part of a series with someone who's committed to bringing Harambe back because of the engagement that it creates. I'll add on one point that the mayor made, and it was about Dane Dances. Because there was a particular evening this summer where Overture had a performance, live on King Street was occurring, I believe it was with Ziggy Marley, and you had Dane Dances. And for one of the rare nights in Madison's downtown, you would see such a wider range, not just of race, but of age, of people enjoying our city. It was such a beautiful night. That's what we need to be striving for. Culture and arts are what brings that force together. We need to be setting that bar of excellence, not just on one night during the year, but throughout 365 days in the city of Madison.